video, we're going to look at one last type of advanced questions in the A-level syllabus. This type of question is known as reacting mixtures. So what does it mean? Now, in a conventional um, chemical calculation question, usually we have two reactants. Reactant 1, reacting with reactant 2 to give me a product. Okay, in reacting mixtures, um, it's slightly more complicated because one of the reactants is actually a mixture of two reactants. So you can have like R1 plus R1 prime. Okay, so you have a mixture of reactants undergoing reaction. Now when you have three reactants, it sounds very very complicated but in actual fact, there's a very very simple strategy or approach to solving questions like this. Now when you have reacting mixtures, once again, it means that you have two reactants reacting with a third reactant. So the all-important strategy goes like this. You would let the amount of the first reactant be X and you let the amount of the second reactant be Y. So if the reactant is a solid, we'll be looking at masses. Let the mass of R1 be X, let the mass of R1 prime be Y. If we are looking at gases, then we will focus on volumes. Let the volume of R1 be X and let the volume of R1 prime be Y. Okay. Next, using X and Y, we can actually set up a pair of simultaneous equations and solve for X and Y. So this is the, always the strategy whenever you see reacting mixtures. So in this question, this is an example of a reacting mixture. So you have an aluminium-magnesium alloy, okay, reacting with acid. Okay, so this alloy contains aluminium. Aluminium will react with acid. It contains magnesium as well, which will react with acid. So in this case, we have a, uh, in this question, we have a case of reacting mixtures. So the strategy goes like this again. Since we are looking at solids, we let the mass of magnesium be X and we let the mass of aluminium be Y. So immediately after that, we can set up this um, first equation because we were given the sample the mass of the sample or we're given the mass of the mixture so x plus y would be equals to 0 0.155 grams okay next how do uh, we set up the second equation is this you are given the volume of hydrogen gas that is produced so 183 centimeter cube represents the total volume of hydrogen gas that was produced from X grams of magnesium and Y grams of aluminium. So in terms of X and Y, we can go on to find the number of moles of magnesium and aluminium. And then by comparing mole ratio, we can find the number of moles of hydrogen uh, that was produced from magnesium in terms of X and number of moles of hydrogen produced from aluminium in terms of Y. And then we can compare it to the total volume so that will set up the second equation of the simultaneous pair. So it goes something like this, as mentioned, number of moles of magnesium is actually equals to x over 24. 24 is the atomic mass of magnesium. And then by comparing mole ratio, um, one mole of magnesium would give me one mole of hydrogen gas. So number of moles of hydrogen produced from magnesium would also be x over 24. Similarly, given y grams of aluminium, number of moles of aluminium would be y over 31, which is the molar or the atomic mass of aluminium. And by comparing mole ratio, the mole ratio now is 2 is to 3. So number of moles of hydrogen produced will be 3 over 2 times y over 31. Okay, given the number of moles of hydrogen in terms of x and y, so number of moles of hydrogen in total um, produced would be equals to this. So from here, we can also find the number of moles of hydrogen gas given the volume, which is 183, 
So we divide it by the molar volume, which is 24,000 centimeter cubed. Now that we have found two expressions for the number of moles of hydrogen gas, we can set up the second equation, which is this. So at this point, we would have two simultaneous equations in terms of x and y. And solving this pair of simultaneous equations, we would therefore be able to find the number, the mass of magnesium. We will be able to find the mass of aluminium. And then the percentage of magnesium is just equals to x over x plus y times 100, which is actually 19.8%. Okay, I'm not going to solve the simultaneous equation here. You can do it on your own. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to arrive at the correct answer. Now, in the last example, we're going to look at a very difficult and tedious question. This question also falls under the category of reacting mixtures. We have a mixture of propane as well as an unknown alkene. Okay, so the mixture contains propane and an unknown alkene. They were reacted with oxygen, meaning they, un they have undergone combustion. And the question gives us the volume of oxygen required to completely burn the mixture, as well as the volume of carbon dioxide that was produced after the combustion. So based on this, information we are supposed to find out two things we are supposed to find out what alkene uh, what alkene is present in the mixture as well as the composition of the mixture by volume okay when you um, approach this question you may be at a loss of what to do because it just looks like there is not enough information to solve it however if you recall there is a reacting mixture question so the strategy again goes like this. We let, since we are looking at uh, gases, we let the volume of one component of the mixture be X and we let the volume of the another component of the mixture be Y. Okay? The difficulty comes in that we don't know what alkene that is. So we just represent it by the general formula, which is CnH2n. Okay? Next we can first set up the first equation because we are given the total volume of the mixture which is 24 centimeter cubed so x plus y equals to 24 okay since we are also given the volume of carbon dioxide we use a similar approach as before given x and y we can actually find number of moles of the components of the mixture and then by comparing mole ratio to find the volume of CO2, which is a product that is formed. Okay? In this case, the equation is not given to us, so we need to write out the, and balance the equation ourselves. So that adds to the difficulty of the question. These are the equations, the balance equations for the combustion of propane as well as the unknown alkene. However, since we are looking at gases, we don't have to convert them into number of moles. Remember, Avogadro's relation tells us that for gases, mole ratio is equal to volume ratio. Okay, so for example, when we look at the combustion of propane, okay, we can see that one mole of propane will give us three moles of carbon dioxide. So the volume of carbon dioxide produced will be just three times the volume of propane, which is 3x. Okay? And the volume of carbon dioxide produced from the unknown alkene will be just n times of the propane, volume of the propane. Uh, sorry, volume of the alkene. Okay, since the alkene is the identity of the alkene is unknown, we add in a third unknown, which is n. Okay, and if you have learned mathematics, you know that when you have three unknowns, a pair of simultaneous equations will not do the job. So you need to set up three equations. And in the question, we are given also the volume of oxygen. 
um, that was required. So that allows us to set up the third equation. And with three equations, how on earth are we going to solve them? We can try to uh, eliminate one of the unknown first to reduce it to two equations and to find the value of the unknowns x, y, and n. So again, it's very tedious, but if you do it correctly, you will find that x equals to 12, y equals to 12, and n equals to 3. Okay, so I'm going to stop at this point. You can go on to solve the question on your own.